Hey, what's going on guys? Today, we finally got a nice day, so we figured we'd take the opportunity of the weather and make a little comparison between our Mavic 2 and our Inspire 2, both of which we've had for a while, and we use them quite a bit, both of them, but we wanna see in which scenarios we like one or the other better. So we're gonna start off by just charging them and getting them set up, and we figured it'd be a good idea to start from here because a lot of the differences start to come through even at this point when you're just getting them set up. So we're gonna get them charged and then we're gonna go out and do a test flight and kind of give you the overall comparison between using the two different cameras. All right, so we got our Mavic 2 Pro in this nice little case. And of course, our favorite to bring out, the Inspire 2. So you can see already, like I said, a lot of the differences are gonna show right off the bat just from us having to set them up and getting them charged. We're gonna see, kind of compare how much time they both take to charge. I have a feeling the Mavic's gonna charge quite a bit faster because it's a smaller battery. So there's our Mavic 2. We also have the uh, smart controller with it, which has made our lives much easier. This battery you can see is pretty much dead. We fly all of our batteries down to less than 25% when, uh, when we do fly, just to keep the battery cycling through charge. So we will charge both the remote and the battery for the Mavic. I'm gonna start charging both the Inspire and the Mavic at the same time, just so we can get a fair comparison, see how long they take to charge. So, let's see here. You can also see this charger is nice and compact, easy to bring with you. You don't really need that whole entire Pelican case. We just bought it with it to protect the drone. And now let's see how the Inspire charges. We should probably have a hard case for the Inspire, seeing that it's such an expensive drone, but this is the case it comes with. And we have two sets of batteries for this. These are the battery insulators that are supposed to help in cold weather. This one got destroyed. Um, but yeah, those help immensely when you're flying in the cold. This is a B, and also another thing with the Inspire, you have to make sure that you're pairing your batteries so they're on the same charge cycle. You can see we have both of these ones labeled as A, so they get flown together. You can't really intermingle them. Um, again, we have battery insulators on here. This one's kind of torn up. But yeah, you can see to charge the Inspire is kind of a process to begin with. Everything about the Inspire is going to involve a bit more time and care, but We'll see, and we're gonna figure out, is it worth all the extra time and care? So, to operate the Inspire, you have a set of batteries, where the Mavic only takes one little battery, and we'll talk about flight time and maneuverability of these guys. Okay. Also the Inspire, when it's fully charged, will start to whine. It has a little chime on it where the Mavic does not. You can hear it already starting to make noises. Okay, so I'll plug in the Inspire. These are both completely dead batteries as well. You can see they're down less than 25%. So we'll plug in the set for the Inspire. Those guys are charging. You can tell by the fact that these are blinking. And then we'll plug in the Mavic. I'm not gonna compare charge times on the remotes because I don't think that matters as much. But, so let's see which one can fully charge first and that will be our first test. So I'm not gonna compare the charge times of the two remotes, but I will point out that the remote for the Mavic 2 Pro charges via USB-C, which is very handy because it's a much smaller charger, easier to bring with you, where the Inspire charges off the same charger as the batteries. So it's not as convenient, it's a larger controller and another thing is we fly the Inspire with the iPad, which we don't have here, so we're gonna have to go get, and that's routinely been a problem is having an iPad to use to fly the Inspire where the screen for the Mavic is built right in. The other reason why that's a big deal is because I was taught you're not supposed to charge the remote at the same time as the batteries on the Inspire charger, because I used to have the Phantom 3 and that was always the case where the Mavic, because it charges on USB-C, the remote controller, you can charge it while your battery's charging and you'll be ready to fly faster. Now that's charging while our battery's charging. All right, so if you heard that, that's the Inspire whining, which means that it's fully charged and 
the Mavic is also fully charged. They took about the same amount of time. Uh, we had a little camera recording it, so we'll have to see how long that took, and Ricky should be able to put it on screen. So I, I want to say it was about 30 minutes, but it was definitely equal amount of time to charge both of them with, within a couple of minutes. So no real difference there besides the fact that you're getting two batteries charged with the Inspire. So. Alrighty, so we got everything all charged up and everything all packed up. Um, we're good to go. We have to bring this extra backpack to carry the iPad in, which usually it's not that big of a deal. Usually we bring like an extra camera with us too, but because Rick's filming with that camera, it's kind of just an empty backpack. We got the Inspire case and the Mavic case. We're good to go. So some of the main things we're going to be looking at between these two drones are obviously the first, probably the most important one is price seeing that the Inspire is literally three times the price of the Mavic, even though we got the Mavic with the smart remote and a hard case. We're also going to be looking at the uh, flight performance, so how well they handle in various scenarios. That's why today is a perfect day to show off the Inspire. It should be very stable, easy to fly in this sort of weather. Um, so if you have a, you know, a paid job where you absolutely have to get the shot that day, the Inspire is usually our go-to. I would say we fly the Mavic on 70% 70 70 of jobs, 30% of the flights are done with the, the Inspire, which I know sounds like a crazy ratio, seeing that the Inspire cost so much, and it was a big investment, but we actually got the Inspire before we got the Mavic, so it used to be we only flew the Inspire. That brings us to the next point, is the fact that flying the Inspire is, it can be kind of a hassle, so that's why we got the Mavic, because it's much easier to pack it up, and if you have to go shoot at a couple different locations in one day, you can do that, where with the Inspire, it's much more of a process of getting the drone ready, setting the drone up, flying the drone. You do get better results often, but the really the major question is how much better are the results, and is it worth the extra price and all the extra time you have to invest into the Inspire? So again, when it comes to storage, uh, another win for the Mavic is that it has onboard storage. It's only like eight gigabytes, but in scenarios like we just came upon, uh, if you forget your memory card, you can at least record something. Where with the Inspire, if you don't have your memory card or a solid state drive, you're kind of screwed. As I was saying, today is going to be a good day for a test because it is windy. We'll be able to see how both of these drones handle wind. Um, We've flown the Inspire in some grueling winds, and the Mavic has endured quite a bit, but nothing as bad as this, I would say. So this is probably the worst conditions we would fly it in, in terms of wind, obviously we've flown in like snow. Don't really fly in rain ever, but um, in terms of wind, this is like 10 to 15 mile an hour wind, so it's a pretty good gust, um, but you wouldn't want to fly it in anything crazier than this. So the other advantage of the Inspire that we're not going to be able to showcase today is the fact that it can be operated by two people. So you can have one person fly the drone while one person operates the camera. We only have one remote with us and I'm the only one flying it. So for comparison's sake, it's just gonna be a single operator. Here we go. Let's start this timer. The major advantage of having the Inspire is not just the fact that it can fly in harsher conditions, but also it has a much larger sensor. So overall better image quality, even if you don't have the solid state drives. Let's see. It's a micro four thirds sensor, so it has interchangeable lenses. You can also Put the landing gear up and down so the camera can be rotated 360 degrees. There's that. Yeah, the nice thing about the Inspire is it sits a lot higher up because it has actual landing gear, so you don't really have to worry about it messing up the gimbal and hitting the ground, which is nice. And also, we have the DJI 15 millimeter F1.7 on there, which is like the stock lens that usually comes with the X5S. Um, we are currently at five and a half minutes. Okay.
All right, let's see if that does it. Almost exactly six minutes. The landing gear goes up automatically. I didn't have I didn't have to uh, adjust the gimbal or anything. It was already all good to go. Sometimes when you set it up, you do have to adjust the gimbal because it'll be like off axis. I'm gonna start recording now. So we've been flying for like 11 minutes, probably closer to 12 minutes now. Um, and we're at half battery, 45% now. So that's a pretty good flight time considering how windy it is. So we've been flying for about 15 minutes now. And yep, on cue, we're at 25% battery. So we're gonna land it um, and we'll do the same for the Mavic. Again, that's the nice thing about the Inspire is you don't really have to worry too much about messing up the gimbal when you're landing because it's so high off the ground. This is some soggy wet ground and it still did fine. Alrighty, so now it's time to fly the Mavic and we're gonna start our timer again, get this one all set up, get a memory card in it and get it off the ground. Okay. I will calibrate the compass on this as well just for comparison's sake, even though usually the Mavic doesn't ask me to. I like to do it anyways, just to be safe. Gotta put the charged battery in to make it a fair comparison. And we already got our ND on there. I'm not gonna bother switching it because I didn't do that for the Inspire, but I will put a memory card in it. You can see what I'm talking about here, how it's so hard to find a good spot to take off because the Mavic sits so low, you'll mess up the gimbal if you try and take off too close to the ground. I love about this controller how the joysticks pack away in the back so you can flat pack this controller. It really comes in handy when you're traveling with the drone. And that's kind of what this guy is ideal for is traveling. But what I usually like to do is actually take off from my case. I found it's a lot easier than finding a good piece of ground to take off. It does take up some time. So let's see, we got one, almost two minutes on the clock and the Mavic's basically ready to go. Like I said, I, I will calibrate the compass, but we're already miles ahead of what we were with the Inspire. Not to mention, if you're filming on location, you're gonna have to drag the Inspire out and that takes more time to get the Inspire to where you're going. Yep, so that was under three minutes. We uh, basically got the Mavic off the ground opposed to the six minutes it took us to fly the Inspire. And it looks like the Mavic's actually doing pretty good in the wind. This is, the wind's really starting to pick up, but it is a lot lighter, so it gets pushed around a little bit more. It's not as powerful, obviously. But also, the image quality on the Mavic is pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna shoot a little bit in the 10-bit mode, but to be fair, I will shoot in the 8-bit mode, because that's how you get the full field, full field of view on the Mavic. It does a lot of, pretty significant crop when you shoot in 10 bit. So we're at 26% battery, oh, 25%. So we're gonna land it, cause that's 
the point we landed the Inspire at, and yeah, there you go, it's low battery warning. And we are at 19 minutes of flight time. Um, again, as I mentioned, it's harder to land the Mavic because it's soggy ground and it's kind of rough. So I'm gonna go land it over there where it's flat. Nice. So yeah, surprisingly, a little bit better flight time on the Mavic, even with the wind, as long as the footage was still stable, I would say the Mavic did better today. But obviously there's many differences between the two drones. That's what we've been talking about. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. There were quite a few things we kind of threw at you, but I guess the general idea is that we were comparing these two drones, but I don't think anybody would really be comparing them to figure out which one they would buy because they're two very different drones, but we're more so just putting all the information out there and letting you guys decide which one you think's better um, after using both of them for quite a while now. Um, we've had the Mavic 2 for two years almost, I'd say a year and a half. And we actually had the Inspire 2 before we got the Mavic 2 Pro. So I think that's something that would have really impacted um, our decision, whether or not we would have bought the Inspire 2 at all. Um, because when we bought the Inspire 2, the Mavic 2 Pro wasn't even out. So it was kind of like the Inspire 2 or the Phantom series below it. In terms of price, obviously it's like a no-brainer. The Mavic 2 is a third of the price, so we'll give the advantage to the Mavic 2 there. Um, but the Inspire 2 is able to really be customized and kind of grown out to the point where you can use it with two operators, you can shoot raw video, where the Mavic 2 would never even be able to achieve that. So obviously another huge factor uh, that differentiates the two of them would be size. The Mavic 2 is something that we love to bring with us. It's so easy, we'll bring it even if we don't even know if we're going to need drone footage, just in case there's the opportunity to shoot drone footage. Because it's so small, it can fit in our little backpack. And I've brought it to Iceland, I've brought it a bunch of different places. And it's great, you can get really high quality footage from it, it's easy to bring with you. And then another major difference we found is overall flight behavior, um, or I guess the experience when flying it. The Inspire 2 is a little touchy, it's kind of a little bit more difficult to fly, it can drift around, it's just heavier, it throws itself around a lot more. Where the Mavic 2 is much more nimble and easy to fly and you still get really good results. And the one major difference I was anticipating on seeing would be um, how they handle wind. And it's very evident that my assumption that the Inspire 2 was gonna do far better is, um, I guess, irrelevant because the Mavic 2 did just as good, if not better. We'll have to look at the footage, but over the years of using them, I always anticipated the Inspire 2 would get better battery life or at least you know better footage uh, in higher winds. As I mentioned earlier, my favorite part about flying the Mavic is how maneuverable it is. It's easy to get it into hard to reach places. You can fly through things and not have to be as concerned where the Inspire 2, I tend to just get general drone footage and it's more for like tracking subjects. It's better for that because it's faster, but the Mavic 2, I found I can really get more interesting, unique shots, kind of like you would with an FPV drone, because it is so small and easy to fly. And really the only other major difference would be image quality, and after using both of these drones for quite a while now, I can say I really do like the video we get from the Mavic 2 Pro. I think the Inspire might be just a little bit better, especially if you're able to shoot RAW or ProRes with it, it'll definitely give you a better result because it is a larger sensor, you have interchangeable lenses, it's much more flexible. But with the, from what I've seen from the Mavic 2, I'll let you guys you know, decide for yourself because we'll put a bunch of footage from both of them in there. We haven't really had the opportunity to shoot raw with the Inspire, but the 10-bit footage out of the Mavic is often just fine for us, if not you know, more than what we need. It gives you a little bit of latitude to work with in post. We usually shoot D-Log. It's a really high image quality. But yeah, like I said to wrap this up, it's not really a comparison. We're not saying buy one, one, buy this one or buy that one. It's just kind of, we're giving you all the information and hopefully it's been informative and you guys have been able to see the differences between uh, what it's like owning both of these drones. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. And yeah, thanks for watching.